All right, we're going on. Uh, just uh, we'll be coming down to some of the closing uh, days, weeks of our, our ministering theme that God gave us. Children who are angry with their fathers. Children who are angry with their fathers. The Lord said to do a theme, do, do some theme preaching on that. And so uh, we've been doing that. And we were going back through some of the words of prophecy. And uh, we thought uh, we kind of needed to speak a bit together at times, my wife and I. And so this is what we're doing today. We've covered uh, many, five of the different types of fathers, fathers that are abused the children, fathers that abuse the children's mothers, fathers that abandon the children, fathers that, uh, uh, that f uh, break their promises, fathers that uh, neglect the children, so I think there's a couple more. Today we'll speak briefly about fathers that are too strict. And the effects of a father that's too strict. Some maybe have not experienced the father in their home, but your mother may have been strict. But whatever the case is, we, we're zeroing in on the children that have are angry with their fathers. As we thought on this, God's wisdom is just wonderful. You look at society and you see the absence of fathers in so many homes. So there's something that's missing that God intended for a family in the reproduction Something is missing because that element of protection and provisions and uh, guidance as it should be, the security that it brings, uh, that wasn't there as it should because uh, the father, if the father fell into either one of these seven categories, then it breeds anger. And long-term anger is evident of unforgiveness. And unforgiveness brings stagnation. Stagnation. Has anybody ever felt stuck? I just felt a quietness. Just, just. Um, has anybody ever felt done it or stagnated? Seem like you're just not moving. You look back at two or three, four years ago, and you're the same place. It's called stagnation. Somebody say stagnation. And stagnation is a sign of a deeper problem or deeper issue. Just a little something to whet your appetite. We're moving on, okay? God is good. The good news is this is a time of restoration. That's the good news. We'll talk a little more about that after we've given some uh, further insights on the Father's that are too strict. Let's go to the word of God again. Uh, found in Ephesians 6. All right, there are four verses here. We... If you would kindly, we ask you to stand one more time. We'll read responsibly, but beginning at verse number one. 
Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Now, mother. That it may be well with thee, and thou mayest live long on the earth. And ye fathers, fathers, provoke not, not your children, children to wrath, wrath but bring them up in the nurture the and admonition of, of the Lord. Lord. And this is a command from the Holy Scriptures. Now I'll turn to Colossians chapter Say amen. amen. Verse 20. Children, obey your parents in all things, for this is well pleasing unto the Lord. Fathers, Fathers provoke not, not your, your children, children to anger, anger lest they, they be discouraged. discouraged. Today I'm going to read the other scripture that's found in Malachi. I won't read it each time, but today I'll read it if you'll turn to Malachi 4. There, say amen. Verse five and verses five and six. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And he, he shall turn, turn the, the heart of the, of the fathers to the, to the children, children, and the heart of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. Seeing how God feel about this whole thing. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this wonderful day and opportunity that you've afforded us today, not only to declare the word, but to be recipients. We thank you for the time that we're living in. We thank you for this dispensation of grace. We thank you, yes, Holy Father, for uh, the time of restoration that you have uh, ordained. Lord God, and prophecies are being fulfilled concerning this day that we are living in, Master. We are the children of promise. We thank you, Holy Father. We could have been born during the time of Moses, and we could have been part of the rebellious crew. Lord, we could have been born during the time of Abraham and have and been a heathen. Lord, we could have been born during the time of Christ and been a scribe or Pharisee. We could have been born, Lord God, in the early parts of the 19th and 20th century. But Lord, you chose at this time. God, hallelujah, during the finale, hallelujah. When you were sown to come again, yes. you ordained our birth Thank into you, this marvelous grand kingdom of the Almighty God. Hallelujah. And so, Lord, we count it a privilege yes. and an honor to be the children of praise. Hey. Thank you, Holy Hallelujah. Father. Thank you, God, for Thank bringing you, us Lord. into the kingdom at this time. Yes, Therefore, we give you praise and honor for it's in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Thank you. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. I'm so glad to be a part of the kingdom of God. I had nothing to do with my birth. Yes, amen. And you had nothing to do with your birth. Yes. God ordained it. Yes. God ordained it. And it's amazing, you know, you know, when you have uh, uh, music and and things of this nature, uh, you, you you hear music and uh, or orchestra or, or core club, glee club your music, you enjoy it, and at the end is the finale. You see the fireworks. Uh, they're so glorious in the heavens. You're just awestruck as you look at them. But in the finale, you see more than a double and triple portion of the same thing at the same time. Yes. A year, man. That's right. 
And so God ordained you and I at this time. And that there's, there's more that's required of you and I. So, so we, we want to listen carefully and so that we can be more effective for God's glory. Isn't that right? God is good. Children who are angry with their fathers. The emphasis is not on the fathers. We will emphasize fathers a bit, but that's not the subject. The subject is children who are angry with their fathers. We talked over these past weeks about the effects of anger, long and short term effects of anger. And the Proverbs had so much to say about anger. And he seemed to declare that it's not wise to be angry over a long period of time. And uh, we believe and assure that uh, the Lord gives us a little moderation. And he says, be angry and sin not. not. So we have a brief time to be angry uh, before the sun goes down. You know, and um, then he said, don't let the sun go down on on your wrath. So that means we, 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 we work to get it right. Lord, I was angry. I was frustrated. But, but I, I, I need to get it right before I lay down. Because it could be that I wouldn't wake up. So I don't want to chance. Yes. Is that all right, y'all? Amen. All right. Okay, now let's go on here. and Because uh, my wife and I are going to share this a little bit together here. Fathers that are... Strict. And my wife is going to read a bit uh, about uh, some of the consequences of strictness, strict fathers, parents. Children are angry. Well, first of all, God bless everyone. Amen. This is a good day. Hallelujah. Um, fathers that are strict, and some of the symptoms are consequences of fathers being too strict on their children are one strict parenting creates issues of comp- uh, with confidence and decision making you know they don't give their children choices you know so they become uh, uh, weak in making decisions or um, having confidence to make decisions for themselves Number two, strict parenting can cause anger issues in children. You can be too strict, and it causes the kids, the children, to be very, very angry, and they internalize the anger. Um, they don't necessarily, as they get older, they will express it more and more, but when they're little, they internalize that anger. Strict parenting can increase risk of depression for kids. Kids can feel like they can't uh, measure up or they're not good enough, and so they become depressed. Then we have number four, strict parenting can lead to childhood lying. You know, I I think all of us can relate to that at some point where our parents, we know how they feel about a certain thing, and then we go ahead and... Uh, and disobedience do what we want to do. And um, as a result, when we, we're called out on it, we have a tendency to make up a little white lie, you know. But sometimes when the parents are too strict, it will cause children to start lying, and it becomes a habit. Can I comment on that, yes. too? It's like a child can't seem to stand up under the pressure of the yes. wrath of that parent. Yes. Especially if that parent has emotional issues, right? Yes. If a parent goes off and they yell a lot, then the child gets so intimidated, and if they do something wrong, then they, in order to survive the, the pressure. pressure of scolding, they'll tell something that's a lie. They're trying to cope, right? And that develops if they stay under that that uh, strictness, and uh, but it, it's at the same time taking away their confidence. And, yes. Um, anyway, go ahead. 
Number five, strict parenting can lead to childhood obesity. Cause a child to overeat or um, get some kind of satisfaction from food, so they develop this habit of excessive eating. You know, and I've seen children, and you know, all those that are parents, you see like you feed a child one minute and here they come back in another two minutes and say, I'm hungry, you know. Uh, we don't question why, you know, we just might smack them up for the head and go tell them go somewhere and sit down, you know. But you just ate, boy, you ain't getting nothing else. But um, so that can cause obesity in children. I, I remember, and some of you probably have seen it, those TV shows where you have these really obese men and women, just really, really obese, yes. four or five as much as 600 pounds. If you listen to their story, mm -hmm. it tells you exactly what we're talking about now. Mm -hmm. And so that's this problem with eating. They, they find, it's like there's the anxiety, there's something inside that just, they don't know what to do, so they just find themselves just eating, eating. and eating and eating. and, and uh, that's Nervous part. eating. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Strict parenting can create a sneaky child. You know, they, they just go behind your back and they sneak and do stuff because they don't have the liberty <laughs> or the permission from the parents to do so. So they'll sneak. They learn how to uh, sneak and go around. You know, I'll put it like this. You know how people try to cheat the system. <laughs> so ch children will develop a way of getting their way and it, they learn how to sneak behind the parents' back and get stuff done. And, and for instance, I heard about a, a, a young lady, mother didn't want her to wear uh, mini skirts or mini skirts were out. And uh, so <clears throat> in order to, you know, stay up with the crowd and keep up with the Joneses, what they would do is take the little skirt, put it in a purse when they got to school, Remember when you couldn't um, you couldn't wear pants to, to school, and uh, you would sneak, you know. But in the case of a parent with parents, the child the things that they don't have the liberty to do that they really desire to do, and it may not necessarily be wrong or right, but because the parents are so strict, it would cause the child to sneak and do things. Okay? I, I remember. <laughs> When I was young, I, my two brothers and I, I don't think this is going. Uh, anyway, let, let me, I remember when we were <laughs> young and you, you know, when you grow up poor, there's always some disadvantages. And so uh, I remember my mom was working and she get a loaf of bread. Now this bread was supposed to last her most of the week. She'd take a sandwich or two and then we'd sneak in there and get some bread, because most of the time we ate biscuits, and so to sneak and eat, and so the bread, the loaf kept getting thin, and so <laughs> mom would, uh, she said, it's, boy, it's, you been in, has anybody been in my, my um, bread? I like bread, so nobody, nobody has been in it. We, no, not me, not me, and so, um, but there's just a number of little things. Now, we weren't Sneaky kids in that, but we had some sneaky habits, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, because, you know, one thing, growing up poor, you couldn't, you couldn't eat the delicacy, you didn't have it. And so, you, you, it was just one of those things. So anyway. <laughs> All right. Strict parenting can interfere with motivation and creativity. Amen, it can stifle the kids' desire to want to do things or to be creative um, because they restrict it so much. And so, um, on that note. Some of the, some of the uh, one of the things that God does is once he healed, many, many times there's a creativity and in this innovative potential in, in, in almost every person 
but it gets stifled when parents are too strict. They don't have the confidence to even try. They can have ideas coming, but they just don't have the confidence because maybe they've been, it's been shot down yes. many, many years as they grew up. And so, but when healing comes, God heals that person. And as the more he heals, the more their confidence yes. increases. Yes. It is such a marvelous thing. And uh, when I came out of school, boy, I, I wouldn't try hardly anything. But when I met Christ and Christ ministered to me and began to introduce me to healing, the more uh, he began to heal me, the more I would have a potential to do certain things. And so I'm saying that to say that, uh, and I, although we are to be first partakers, but if, as, and if some of you have noticed that as God has been healing you, you have a greater level of confidence now and you'll begin to try things and do things and, and this, this innovation and creativity must, must begin to blossom yes. in your life. See, God has a purpose for you. Yes. Hallelujah. And it's not shyness and timidity. Yes. It is a blossoming by the power of the Holy Spirit so that you can begin to do the exploits through his marvelous, marvelous name. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 And the ability to create God in us as a creator. Yes. Amen. Yes. So we have that in us mm -hmm. when we have Christ dwelling on the inside. Mm -hmm. And so it, that, if that stifled, mm -hmm. that creativity, that inventor in you, yes. that musician in you, mm -hmm. that worshiper in you, mm -hmm. you know, that us, that that prophet. That mo yeah, the motivator yeah. in you, you know, is 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 there. Yes. But it won't come out until God can heal yes. from these childhood issues. Absolutely, boy. It can give you the confidence. And when God, as God heals us, the more he heals you, you'll find yourself saying and doing things that you never, ever dreamed that you would do. And guess who gets the glory? That's right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He gets the glory. Hallelujah. Uh, I'll share something on personal note. When I was young, I used to love art and I loved drawing. And uh, but it got, I don't know, it got pushed back somewhere. And uh, it's only recently, I think I was uh I very active in it when I was in junior high school, but only to recently that in my 60s that God began to stir me again to do art. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. Didn't have the confidence. In fact, when I started to, to get back into it, I didn't really have the confidence that I could do it. Mm -hmm. But to my surprise, it was still there. But so I'm saying that uh, the healing, when healing takes place, a lot of things and gifts and talents in us, mm -hmm. God will stir them up again. Amen. And I just, I just sense, even as we're talking, that God's going to do that to some of you. It's just going to happen. And, and even before this year is out, some of you are going to do things that you had no idea because of what God is doing. So get the healing. Isn't that right? <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Get the healing. Now, so, all right, we said children that are angry. All right, so let's forget the fathers for a moment. Deal with the children. Children that are angry, right? Mm -hmm. Anger promotes unforgiveness. And unforgiveness can lead to stagnation stuck all right so that means God had to visit the foundation you, you know how when a, when a, when a, um, a car is stuck in the snow the wheels get spinning 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 it's not going nowhere so what do they have to do they have to put something where the wheels are and secure the wheels. 
And when that happens, the car is able to move again. Yes. So what God has to do is heal places in our lives that either devastated us, made us angry, made us feel like we can't do it to whatever words and things. And, 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 and once that leaves, the, we, give a, we get a new outlook, we get a new mindset and new thoughts instead of the old thoughts. Those old thoughts that say, you can't do this. You don't need no need you trying to, you know you can't do that. Then, then those new thoughts, I, I can do all things through Jesus Christ. And, right. and, and, and when you, those new thoughts are coming as a result of God purifying more of our hearts, then we find ourselves having different action, right? Yes. Different action. And this is what it's all about, saints. And so God is interested in us. Somebody said, boy, all they do is just talk about healing, healing, healing. You got to understand where God want to take you. Yes. Isn't that right? Amen. When you understand where God wants to take you, you'll see uh, healing is a means to an end. Yes. Are you with me? Amen. Amen. It's not an end in itself. So, so. With that in mind, stagnation means motionless, still, sluggish, no movement, or, act, or inactive. Act, inactive, inactive, the state of not flowing or moving, lack of activity, growth, or development. Somebody say stagnation. So... God wants to move us. Some of you have gifts that are just lying dormant. Mm -hmm. Just lying dormant, those gifts. Now, when gifts are dormant, you are not useful, so you are not feeling the significance or you're not feeling that sense of purpose. Are you with me? And when that's happening, that means you are not satisfied. Yes. So God undoes that. Are you with me? He heals us to mobilize us. Yes. It is so marvelous. Now, yeah, there, there's some side benefits like blessings down here. But God's purpose is more or less to mobilize us and bring us into kingdom purpose. Somebody say kingdom purpose. Kingdom purpose. It is God's design. Just a little bit about stagnation. Then we're going to flip it a little bit and talk a little bit about restoration. Praise the Lord. You want to read those, babe? Mm -hmm. Excuse me. Somebody says, well, I'm not stagnant. I'm stagnant here. I'm busy. I mean, I'm I'm on the phone. I'm doing this and so on. So, but if if if, if one you can be busy doing nothing, <laughs> and you can be busy not doing the right thing, amen. So she's gonna read some signs of stagnation. And if you happen to uh, uh, see two or three of these here, that uh, you know, then just say, well, okay, I, I think. Uh, <laughs> Constant pro procrastination of your goals. Keep putting things off. Or uh, have something in mind and it's so much that goes into it that you just don't make an attempt to do it. So that's procrastination. Don't ever feel like doing anything. You know, sometimes you get that you just don't feel like doing nothing. Don't feel like going to the store. You don't feel like uh Come to church sometimes. Sometimes you don't feel like even going on your job, but you know you got to go because you got to eat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but you don't feel like doing it. Mm -hmm. So uh, one of the signs of stagnation is don't ever feel like doing anything. Mm -hmm. uh, number three, keep turning to sleep. Eating, games, mindless activities, and entertainment for comfort. <laughs> Can I read that one again? Keep turning to sleep, want to sleep all the time, eating all the time, can't get satisfied, playing games, and sometimes we're on, the, on our phone playing games for hours at a time, uh, mindless, activity, to mindless activities, and entertainment for comfort. You know, 
got to turn the TV on. Don't really want to look at it, but you, you want to be entertained. The young people says, I'm bored. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a, yeah, I hear that a lot. <laughs> if you know you should be doing, number four, if you know you should be doing something and keep avoiding it, mm -hmm. that's a sign of stagnation. Mm -hmm. If you have not achieved anything new or significant, now, relative to one month, two months, or three months ago, you're stagnated. Mm -hmm. If you have a deep sense of feeling that you are living under your potential, you know, sometimes you get in this place and you feel like, I ought to be doing more. I know it's more to life than this. You know, mm -hmm. that's a sign of stagnation. Okay. And then we're gonna so continue. now, yeah, now, now think about this with me. I, I know I... Uh, it it kind of helped me a lot. I said, wow, yeah. Uh, um, there's so many things that sometimes I feel like I have to do. And sometimes I don't know where to start. It's like, oh, God. It's, you, know, there's, you know, if you're visionary, God just gives you. And you see it. You see the potential you see. And, uh, but it gets larger than life. And uh, that's where you got to uh, be in the presence of God and get that sense of Directions, first thing first, first thing first. And, uh, um, but the hope now yes. is restoration. We're going to read a few scriptures here. And the very truth of what we believe, the truth of what Christ has done, is the thing that we're going to focus in on now. What in the world did he do? Why did he do? Die. He died to restore us, to restore all that was lost in the fall. And uh, so before this last part is over with you, you might be shouting a look, but it's okay. Restoration, that's what you have to look forward to. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And I would want, I'd like to make the statement of the fact that we cannot do, get out of certain situations that we struggle with on our own strength. But when it comes to anger issues, Jesus Christ is the real solution mm -hmm. to our anger. Yes, he is. Amen. Yes, he is. And because he's the real solution, then... That's who we need to look to. You know, uh, vain is to help a man. Mm -hmm. But when we open our heart and spirit to God's will and purpose, mm -hmm. when we humble ourselves, mm -hmm. then Jesus, mm -hmm. in his word, and we're going to see it through restoration, mm -hmm. will come and heal those areas that are, were dormant, mm -hmm that were uh, under uh, uh, conscious, uh, unconscious recall, those things that were so far back in the past, but yet they are affecting us in the future. Mm -hmm. Only Jesus yes. can do that in us that we can't do for ourselves because yes. of his love and because of his grace. Amen. So now we're going to go into restoration. So now I want you to grab a hold of hope now. This is not something, you know, you may have any symptoms of stagnation or anger and so on. You, you're not to be discouraged. You are to says, wow, now I know what I need. Now I know what's been holding me back. So now I'm going to open myself wide for God to fix me right up because he's the one. We don't fix ourselves up, isn't that right? Listen to what Joel said in Joel chapter 2, verse 21. Fear not, O land, be glad and rejoice, for the Lord will do great things. Be not afraid, ye beasts of the field, for the pastors of the wilderness do spring. For the tree bears her fruit, the fig tree and the vine do yield their strength. Be glad then, ye children of Zion. And rejoice in the Lord your God, for he hath given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause to come down for you the rain, 
the former rain and the latter rain in the first month. And the floors shall be full of wheat and the vats shall overflow with wine and oil. And I will restore, listen to this, and I will restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you, and you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied oh! and praise the name of the Lord your God that have dealt wondrously with you, and my people shall never be ashamed. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel and that I am the Lord your God and none else and my people shall never be ashamed. Come on, give God some praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. And now look at verse 20. He said, and it shall come to pass afterward that in the, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. This is the age we're living in. Y'all see it? And your old men shall dream dreams and your young men shall see visions. And, and also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days will I pour out my spirit. And I'll show wonders in the heavens and in the earth and so on. Uh, I mean, I want you to see that we are in that time. We're in that age where God is pouring out his spirit. Glory to God. Before yes. you go there... Um I'm sorry, in verse 32, and it shall come to pass that whosoever calls on the name of the Lord yes. shall be saved. Yes, yes. Glory to God. That is powerful. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We, there's something that we have to do to receive these blessings and promises. Mm -hmm. We got to call on the name of the Lord. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. The channel is open. The heavens are open. Do you know in the Old Testament the heavens was not open to humanity? Only to the to the to the high priest and the priest. The, the heavens were not open to the ordinary man, but the veil of the temple or the curtain was torn from top to bottom giving every man that believed access to heaven's court. Yeah, are, are you hearing what I'm saying? We have access now. And, and, and we're looking at what Peter said in the book of Acts. You know when when the birth of the church came about and Peter stood up there on the day of Pentecost and began to preach the same cowardly Peter that ran for his life. Hallelujah. See, the Holy Ghost will change you. Yeah. The Holy Ghost can give you power and strength that you never knew of. And so Peter was stood up to preach to the, uh, to the people there that had gathered there on the day of Pentecost. There was a holy boldness upon Peter. And then the, uh, after he preached, they said, what in the world? But men and brethren, what, what shall we do? Peter said, repent ye therefore and be converted in your sins that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord and he shall send Jesus Christ which before was preached to you whom the heaven must receive to the times of restitution of all things which God has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. This is We, we are living in the days where the children of the prophets, we are, we are the recipients of the first part of this blessing. Amen. For Moses truly said to the fathers, a prophet shall the Lord your God raise up to you of your brethren like unto me. Him shall you hear in all things whatsoever he shall say to you. And it shall come to pass that every soul which will not hear that prophet shall be destroyed from among the people. Yea, and all the prophets from Samuel and those that follow after as many as have spoken have likewise foretold of these days. Yeah. Then he goes on to say, you are the children of the prophets and of the covenant which God made with our fathers, saying to Abraham, and in thy seed shall all the kindreds of the earth be blessed. Unto you first, God, having raised up his son Jesus, sent him to do what? Bless you. To bless you in turning away every one of you from his iniquities. Come on, let's give God thanks Hallelujah. for what he's done. Hallelujah. 
This is the age. This is the time where God is restoring humanity. And, and, and saints of God, it, it didn't start with God saying to us, this is the appointed time. The time was from the time that God, uh, the church was birthed and Jesus died for our sins everyone that believed can receive of God and that's why when Jesus was demonstrating the will of God even before he went to Calvary but it was in light of Calvary that he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil the blind saw the lame walked the dumb talk everything began to happen to the dumb the dead was raised up but the power of the living Christ was there he was restoring humanity yeah. all sickness had to go yeah. all diseases has to go all of the, the, the mental oppression had to go God cast out demons I, I hope you hear what I'm saying it was a time of restoration of all things and, and God was demonstrating the year of jubilee and God says this is a jubilee and the saints of God on the day of jubilee they were not sad they began to praise the Lord with everything within them because restoration of everything that they lost. Somebody come on, let's give God some praise. It's a time of restoration. It's a time of restoration. It is a time of restoration. So what God wants is us to get a hold of this thing about restoration. You don't have to be waiting 10 years from now. The time is upon you now for God's people to be blessed. Hallelujah. Glory to God. One thing about the restoration of Jesus Christ, the words that he's the same yesterday, today, forever. He hasn't gone anywhere. He is yet alive. Yes. Forget that Jesus is still alive. Yes. Hallelujah. He is not dead. Yes. The word proclaims that Jesus is alive. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's ever living to make intercession for us. Yes. Bring a restoration Glory. as we call out on the name of the Lord. Yes. To deliver the oppressed. Yes. Glory. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do you remember what John said in John 10.10? 10? Jesus said, the thief cometh not, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. But never mind that. He said, but I am come, come that the sheep might have life. Yes. That they might have it more abundantly. Hey, glory. God wants to give you the abundant life. Yes. God wants you not just to get by. God wants you not to be able just to pay your bill. God wants you to have help sometime. God wants you to be full of life, full of help, because the blessings of the Lord, it makes rich, and he adds no sorrow with it. God, hallelujah, this is your time. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, this is your time. Arise and shine, for the Lord is the glory of the Lord is upon you. Arise and shine. Give God the glory. Don't wait till you see it with your eyes. Shame. Begin to praise God now because the just shall live by faith. Isn't that right? Yes. So you gotta believe him before you see it. Yes. Begin to praise him and God will bring it to pass. But you gotta believe it before you see it. Somebody ought to praise God. Hallelujah. For the Bible said, in that day shall you say, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, all you people. Lord him. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know you that he is God. Is he that made you not you say it. Hallelujah. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts for praise. God is saying, if you understand the time, I won't have to tell you to praise me. If you understand what you're all about, I won't have to tell you to praise God. You will praise him for the goodness and the blessedness of all things. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Glory to God. Glory to God. You see, it's the work of God. It's the work of Jesus. Yes. Give me a mic, baby. Healing is necessary yes. because it's working in us the restoration. Yes. Hallelujah. God cleanses the iniquities. Yes. He heals our iniquities. Yes. Hallelujah. Jesus is doing that. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. And as He's doing that, He's working that new life in us. Yes. He's bringing renewal to our yes. spirits. Hallelujah. He's bringing joy oh. in our soul. 
Hallelujah. He's bringing hope. Glory. Yes, when Lord. we see no hope, He's Hallelujah. bringing hope for tomorrow. Yes. Hallelujah. Glory, Glory to, God. to God. He's sending a renewal yes. of the latter rain Hallelujah. and the former rain. Yes, Hallelujah. And Glory to God. Yes, God. Hallelujah. He's working in us both the ability yes, and the will yes, to do us this good pleasure. Yes, we can't God. do it in our strength, yes. but we need the work of the Holy Spirit Glory. moving on the inside. Yes. Hallelujah. Glory Pulling down God. the strongholds of the enemy. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. God is our refuge and strength and a very present help in a time of need. The Bible says in a time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion in the secret of his tabernacle. And Paul said in Corinthians, if any man be in Christ Jesus, he's a new creature. He's a new creation. Hallelujah. All things are passed away. And behold all things are made new. Maybe you are stuck in the past. Maybe you are stuck in the things that happened to you. Maybe you are stuck in your mind but I, I want to ask you now hallelujah to begin to look up and live hallelujah I heard the old man Jonah hallelujah when Jonah had gone astray and then when, when he had gotten to the bottom hallelujah then he began to say I will look again Oh, glory. Toward thy holy yes. hill. He got his eyes off God. He wouldn't obey God. But then when he got to the bottom, hallelujah, he was reminded that the word of the Lord shall not fail. And he said, I will look again toward your holy hill. I want to ask you to lift your eyes. I want to ask you to begin to believe God again. Maybe circumstances in life have beat you down. But yes. let me tell you again, stand up again. Begin to believe God again. Begin to trust God. Let his word come out of your mouth. Say it again and God will change your situation. God will change what you cannot change. Yes, hallelujah, hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah. John 10. Time 10. of restoration. Says so a thief does not Ooh, come glory. except to steal yes. and to kill hallelujah. and to destroy. Yes. I have come yes. that they may have life glory. and that they may have it more abundantly. Yes, this is what the word of God declares about right, us. Right, right, right. That we can have the abundance glory. of life. Yes, That's what Jesus came to give us. Mm. Hallelujah. And you might say, well, you know, well, why I'm in the situation then? Because we need healing. Yes. Because we need restoration. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. We need iniquities removed from our heart. Glory to Hallelujah. God. Hallelujah. So that we can experience yes, Lord. the abundance. Yeah. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Iniquities are the thief, the devil, the instrument that the devil used to rob us yes. of the blessings of God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yes. Glory to God. David said, create in me. A clean heart. A clean heart, oh God. And renew a right spirit in me. Hallelujah. Glory. He said, if I regard iniquity in my heart, then the Lord will not hear me. Ah, boy, I don't know if about you, but, but if you find yourself being angry, come on, let's, 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 do, let's do it together. Let's believe God um, to take away the anger. Isn't that right? Um, let's forgive everybody that's ever done anything wrong to us. Um, because if we regard iniquity in our heart, then God won't hear. It puts us in a place of stagnation. We can't go forward. Um, but God wants wants to loose us uh, from stagnation but God uh, wants to cause this church to go forward but God uh, wants to loose us from complaining God wants to help us uh, to begin to see again uh, hallelujah we got to be loose from stagnation we got to begin to see what God is saying and realize who is in our midst it is God that works in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure somebody say to yourself I'm, I want to be loose from stagnation I want to go forward now. Come on, give God some praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I heard the Bible says he forgiveth all of my iniquities. He healeth all of my diseases. He redeems my life from destruction and he places a song in my heart. Even praise to God. David says serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Do like Samson had to do before the anointing came. Shake yourself. Hallelujah. 
Shake off the things that, that's got you bound. Shake off yourself. And come on, stand up with me and begin to praise the Lord a little bit. You see, Hallelujah. praise him gives God the right to do what you can't do. Hallelujah. Praise him, somebody. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 God can be trusted. Yes. God can be trusted. Come on, somebody. God can be trusted. Don't hold your head down no more. Lift up your head and give God some praise. Hallelujah, somebody. Know that he is God. Hallelujah. You can trust him Hallelujah. to do what he said. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, I feel God. Yes. I feel God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I feel God. Hallelujah. Yes. He wants to shake off the, the things that's been hindering us uh, all these years. Uh, hallelujah. Do you know who you're serving? Uh, do you know who's with you? Hallelujah. You, you know, listen to me. Man can't stop you yes. if you understand who God is. Yes. Shake yourself. Uh, begin to give God the praise that's yes. due his name. Hallelujah to God. Glory. Hallelujah. Glory. This restoration is so powerful. Hallelujah. Glory. It's a weapon. When you have this hope on the inside of you. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 and 18. Praise God. Yes, God. Therefore, mm. if anyone yes. is in Christ, oh, he yes. is a new creation. Mm. All things, all nature, yeah. all habits, all ways of thinking, mm. hallelujah, have passed away. Mm. Behold, all things uh, become new. Yes, Lord. Now all things are of God Glory. who has reconciled us yes. to himself yes. through Jesus Christ uh, and have given us the ministry uh, of reconciliation. Hallelujah. That is yes. that God was in Christ mm. reconciling the world to himself yes, and imputing their trespasses to them yes, and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, he wants us. Hallelujah. He wants us now. Hallelujah. To believe him. Yes. And let it be evident by your praise. Yes. Are you hearing me? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, God knows. And when we praise God, hallelujah is saying amen to what God's promises to us. Isn't that right? It's saying amen, Lord. If God says I'm going to bless you, then you say amen by praising him. Hallelujah. Yes. Come on, give us some praise in this house. He's a great God. Hallelujah. It is a time of restoration. God is restoring to you that which the locust and the caterpillar and the cake of worms has eaten up in your life. Uh, I don't know who, what ites they were. The Arab parasites, the uh, Jebusites, and the Amorites, uh, whatever those ites were in your life. Let me tell you this. Uh, this day is a day of restoration. This time is a time where God is saying, I will destroy the yokes. Um, I will destroy the yokes um, upon you. Hallelujah. If I get you to praise me, I'm going to work on your behalf. Somebody needs a miracle. Somebody needs a miracle in this place. And God is saying to you, my word is true. Yes, it is. If you dare change your attitude and begin to praise God, he'll lift you out of your situation. Yes. You see, God can't get in there. Because demons of doubt and confusion are all around you. But when you lift your voice, and chains will begin to come off. Hallelujah. You remember Paul and Silas when they were in the jail, yes. in the Philippian jail. Um, they were held stocks, um, held by feet, and their hands were held in, uh, in chains. Um, and Paul and Silas could have sat down and cried, said, Lord, uh, this is what we get when we try to serve you. And you know, it ain't worth all this. Um, they could have had a pity party, but what they did, they began to sing songs, uh, and they began to praise God. Um, and the jailers began to hear it. Uh, and the Bible says, and when they began and when they began to thank and to praise God, God.
God began to do something. He broke the chains of, he loosed the shackles of, and he set them free. You got to hear me today. God is saying, if I can get my people to praise me, if I can get them to praise me, not only in the assembly, but in your home. Uh, when things ain't going well, when things don't look well, uh, I want you to have an attitude of faith that says God's going to do what he said uh, and I'm going to praise him to see the victory. Somebody, you ought to praise the Lord today. Give him some glory. Hallelujah. Glory to God. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The key to the key to in the stagnation in our lives. Mm. Hallelujah. This word got me on fire. Uh, 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 Hallelujah. The enter stagnation and to receive the restoration. I'm gonna tell you what this key is. The key to it all. Ah. Is forgiveness. Hallelujah. Ah. If we allow forgiveness to come in our hearts to release people from hurts, yes, Lord, release people from oppression, yes, release people from their criticalness and persecution. Yes. Yes. If you could put on the spirit of Jesus yes. Christ yes. and forgive them. Yes. For they know not what they do. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory. Restoration. Yes, Hallelujah Lord. is ours. Yes. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Nobody in this earth yes. is worth my restoration. Yes, God. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Nobody. Yes, God. It's worth me losing out. Yes. On the promises yes. and the blessings of God. Yes, Nobody. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. So let's forgive that father. Hallelujah. Yes. That right. Let's forgive that father. And you don't have to rehearse no more what he did. You know, sometimes your life can be like rehearsing. You just keep rehearsing. You keep rehearsing over and over again what what what, what was done. But yeah. but stop. Holding but on. stop. But stop and forgive. Hallelujah. And let it go. And let it go. Let it Hallelujah. Go. Let it go. It's holding you back. Let it go. Hallelujah. Let it go. Let it go. As you let it go, you'll feel the freedom again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let it go. And when you let it go, God's going to begin to talk to you again. Let it go, somebody. Don't keep holding on to it. Hallelujah. When Israel was in a foreign land, uh, Israel, they, they were told to praise God and sing songs. They said, how can we sing songs of Zion in a strange land? Uh, but don't you wait until you get out of that strange situation. You begin to sing songs of Zion uh, yes. and watch the Lord deliver. Hallelujah. Yes. God is a deliverer. It's like God can be sitting down. He can be sitting down and they, people be calling on him and calling on him. And, but the little simple praise, yes. honoring him yes. is what he's looking for. Yes. And so God can be sitting down and your situation, you'd be saying, I wish God would hear me. Why don't he hear me? But then when you change that and begin to say, you know what? I'm going to praise him if the situation don't change. And when you start praising God, God will get up on your behalf. Hallelujah. He'll get up and he'll begin to do what you can't do. He'll begin to get up like the Lion of Judah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And he'll work for you. Somebody shout glory to the Lamb. God is on your side. God is on your side. God is on your side today. God is on your side. He's on your side. He's on your side. Hallelujah. And he wants you to know he's on your side. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, anybody feel like praising him yet? Yes. Anybody feel like blessing the Lord? Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Uh, Glory to God. Glory. Hallelujah. Glory. Thank you, Jesus. Glory. Hallelujah. You're worthy, Lord. Ah. 
saying this song restoration has finally come I've been restored back to my place in yes, Lord. hallelujah yes. oh anger has to leave oh bitterness has to go unforgiveness can't stay when you praise the Lord hallelujah glory to God hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. did you know that you were made to praise him hallelujah glory to God Kings and priests unto God. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Glory. Saints, do we realize mm. that we are lights yes, Lord. in this world? <laughs> Glory. Hallelujah. Glory. And if you are light, yes, Lord. you can't have no darkness and you trying to say you the light. Yeah. You can't have an unforgiveness and mm. hating your brother and sister mm. and saying that you're in the light. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Glory to God. Light comes to show people the way. Yes. yes. Hallelujah. And light brightens. comes, hallelujah, to brighten up the path. Yes. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And the Bible. Hallelujah. So we are lights in this world. Yes. God. Hallelujah. We got to lay hold on Christ. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Why it's day for the night come when no man shall work. Hallelujah, we don't really understand the ramifications for that. Yes. Hallelujah, but stuff is happening in our world right now. Yes. Hallelujah, glory, glory to, God. to God. That's never been seen. Yes. Hallelujah, never heard of. Yes. They were doing it back in the Old Testament time. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah, but it's real. Yes. I remember, I remember, man, I was looking at it on TV. And I'm, we're going to kind of close with this. This man was looking, he was a very influential man in the Christian world. And he was looking at another preacher preach. And he didn't like the way he preached. And he, so every time he'd hear him preach, he would just get bothered. And one day, he happened to turn the channel and this man was preaching that he didn't like. He said, you know, and he made a comment like this you know, this, this man. And so all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit spoke to him. And he said, you don't approve of how I use this brother, do you? And he stopped and said, oh, God. He felt God saying to him, don't judge him. Don't judge him. Don't judge him. Yes. He staggered on the couch. He was so broken, so penitent and contrite. He literally stumbled on the couch and fell. And when I saw that, I said, now I understand why he is where he is. His heart was so tender toward God. May I encourage you today, if you want to go places in God, it's you and God. It ain't you and people. It's you and God. And if you don't get that right, you will stay stuck but God wants to move us yeah. forward. Hallelujah. I, I, I just, I believe God is speaking to us today. He said, this is a time of restoration. Yes. And this is the time when I am moving by my cloud. Yes. By my cloud, I'm moving. Somebody, let's move with him now. Let's move with them now. Father, we thank you. We give you praise right now. We give you honor. We magnify you.
because of your holy anointing. This is the time for us to move with God and see the salvation of God. Oh, yes, God, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you. I, I, I believe that many chains are going to fall off. I believe people are going to have some things happen to them this year that they long to see for a long time. The restoration is here. And God is restoring the years that were taken from you, that were eaten up through the subtlety of the enemy. He's restoring those years. Father, I thank you. I give your name to praise. I give your name to glory. I want to ask you to stand with me. And if, if, if somehow you, you, you feel that God's speaking to you about anything, any anger toward your dad, you want to let him go. Purpose in your heart, I'm going to let him go today. I'm going to let him go. If you feel him talking to you. This ain't about us. It ain't about you. In that sense, it's about God's plan for every individual life. But if you'll say today, God, I heard the preachers preaching. And I saw for I've held either my parents or my dad held them hostage and said if they hadn't have done this I wouldn't have been in the shape that I'm in but I'm ending it today I'm coming to God and I'm going to allow Jesus to bring about restoration in my life because this is the time as he's doing great things. Father, we thank you. We give you praise. As the heads are bowed and eyes are closed. If anyone is here that you're not where you should be in God, or you backslid, or you not saved, you heard the word today and you got stirred and you want to draw close to God you want to be saved or you want to come back to Jesus